Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. Today we're going to be looking at one of the ways you can measure the rate of respiration and this links to topic 5 in A-Level Biology, the energy transfers. So we're going to be looking at the use of a respirometer today. Um, we're going to go through all of the pieces of equipment here, the purpose of each and then what we'll be measuring. And it's all to do with changes in volume and therefore changes in pressure caused by gases absorbed by whatever living organism is placed inside of this experimental tube. So let's have a look then at the equipment. You would typically have two test tubes. One is there as a control and the other is our experimental tube. And they are attached together by what we call a manometer. And this is this really, really thin capillary tube, which has colored liquid inside of it. And against that, there'll be a piece of plastic typically, which has a scale on it, like a ruler, so you can measure how far this colored liquid moves over a period of time. Now, the top of each test tube has to be completely airtight because we're going to be looking at um, changes in gas volume and pressure. So therefore, we have to make sure no gases are entering or leaving. So completely airtight with a bung. We do still have, though, coming out of the bung, a um, capillary tube, which would have a three-way tap. And that's what this label would be, three-way tap. And on the control tube, we also have a syringe. Now the point of this is, you will need to, if you want to do repeats, reset your equipment so you can move the coloured liquid back to the start point whereby both points are at exactly the same level. And you can do this by either pulling up or pushing down on the syringe to change the volume of gas inside and therefore move the liquid back to the start point. Our experimental tube will have a, a living organism within it that will respire. Now I'm using maggots as the example today, but just as likely you could do this experiment with wood lice or sometimes with plants, in particular peas is a common example, um, fresh peas which should still be respiring. In both test tubes we have soda lime. The purpose of this powder or the granules of soda lime is to absorb any carbon dioxide. So then we'll know any changes in volume are just to do with oxygen being absorbed. For this bit here as well, you'll have a piece of gauze or a metal mesh just to make sure those maggots can't touch the soda lime because it would be harmful um, to their skin. It could be an irritant. So we need to make sure they don't touch that soda lime. Our control tube, exactly the same, except if we want to prove that it's definitely the organism that is respiring and nothing else causing the changes, then we need to put an inert object. So we've got gas, uh, sorry, glass beads here as an example, because they won't be respiring, but you'd put the same mass of glass beads in as maggots just to keep everything consistent. So what we'd then expect is if we have this all set up, then close the taps to make sure it's completely airtight. You then set a timer and look at how far the coloured liquid moves over a set period of time. And what we'd expect to happen is the maggots will be respiring and for aerobic respiration they'll be using up oxygen and that will then mean to replace the oxygen used, oxygen from the gas, the air within the experimental tube will diffuse into the maggots. The maggots will also be producing an equal amount of carbon dioxide as they respire, but that carbon dioxide is going to be absorbed straight into the soda line. So the effect that we'll see is the volume of gas inside of the experimental tube will decrease because the oxygen is moving into the maggots. The carbon dioxide that is produced is absorbed straight away out of the local atmosphere in that tube into the soda line. So if the volume of gas decreases, that will mean the pressure will drop inside of our experimental tube. Now that won't be happening in the control tube because the glass beads aren't taking in any oxygen. So comparatively, the glass beads, um, the control tube here, will have a higher pressure compared to the experimental tube. 
And because the pressure is comparatively high in the control tube, that will then force the air around and the liquid inside of the manometer tube, and therefore the liquid will start to move towards the experimental tube. So if we left it for five minutes, we might expect to see the liquid has moved around. So at the end of that five minutes, what we could then do is work out what was the rate of respiration. And the way to work this out is, it's the volume of oxygen absorbed over a particular period of time for a particular mass of maggots. Now the volume of oxygen, the way we can work that out is the volume of the cylinder for which the oxygen was moving through. So we need to know what is the area of the cross section of the manometer or this capillary tube. And the length is the distance that it traveled. So if we imagine each of these lines was representing five millimeters, for us, it might have moved, if that was the start point, five, 10, 15 millimeters. So once you've worked out the volume, then you are dividing that by the period of time you left it for. So we said in our example, five minutes. And we also divide it by the mass. And the reason you have to take into account the mass is, so it is a fair comparison. Because if you want to work out the rate of respiration for maggots, you'll end up with a much higher value if you have more maggots present. But that doesn't mean those maggots were respiring faster, it just means there were more of them. So that's why we always have to take into account the mass of the maggots, so it is a fair comparison. So for that reason, the unit is always a three component unit. It's always a unit for volume, per unit time, per unit mass. So for example, it could be centimetres cubed per minute per gram. So here are some example exam questions that you could typically get linked to this practical. And I've split it into the top two are questions about the setup and the method itself. So explaining why the apparatus must be airtight and explain the purpose of the soda line. Then the next one down here is more an application of your knowledge. So you have to use your knowledge of respiration to explain why the liquid would move towards the left. And then the final two are more analysis questions using your math skills. And this one here, three marks for saying what the units would be. That would be your hint to be able to remember that there are three components to the units to include. So have a go. It will take about five to 10 minutes if you do want to pause. If not, keep watching and we're going to go through those straight away. So number one, why does it have to be airtight? Well, the whole reason the liquid moves is because of pressure changes. And if any gases could enter or exit, then it would mean that the pressure changes are no longer due to the respiring maggots. It's due to another factor. So it's going to affect the movement of the liquid. So that's why we need to make sure it's completely airtight. The purpose of the soda lime is to absorb the carbon dioxide produced. And that's because the volume of oxygen that will be absorbed by the maggots will be equal to the volume of carbon dioxide produced in respiration. So if that carbon dioxide was not absorbed, the volume would always remain constant, the pressure would remain constant, and that liquid would not move, and therefore we'd have no way to measure the rate. So it absorbs the carbon dioxide, so we are able to actually measure the volume of oxygen absorbed by the maggots, and we use the volume of oxygen absorbed to represent the rate of respiration. The next one was explain why the liquid would move to the left. Now sometimes they'll add in an extra question and they'll actually get you to work out which direction would the liquid move first. Um, and it's not always set up the experimental tubes on the left, sometimes it's on the right, but the, the liquid will always move towards the experimental tube. And the reason for that is the maggots are respiring, so they're going to be um, having more oxygen diffuse across their surface for more aerobic respiration. Carbon dioxide which is produced will be absorbed by the soda line, so we'll end up with a decrease in volume in the experimental tube. That will cause a decrease in pressure. Comparatively, the control tube has a higher pressure now compared to this lower pressure in the experimental tube. Therefore, it's going to force that liquid, that colored liquid around towards the experimental tube. 
So the units, three parts, it's always a unit for volume, per unit time, per unit mass. So I've used this as an example, but it could equally be millimeters cubed. Um, most likely it is per minute for this. So if it was per second, um, seconds isn't really long enough to see a change. And per grams is the most common because whatever you do put in the experimental tube has to be small enough to fit in a tube. So you're going to be measuring, measuring it in grams. So for this maths question, the formula you would need to use to work out the rate is the volume divided by the time taken and the mass. And this would be the volume of air the time taken for the liquid to move a certain distance times the mass of the maggots or whichever animal you used. So to work out the volume of air that moved, that is basically the volume of that section of cylinder where we had the movement of the red liquid. And to work out the volume of a cylinder, it's pi r squared times the length. Now, in this case, we've been told that the diameter of the tube is three millimeters. So the radius R would be 1.5. And the length is the distance that the liquid moved for this. And that would be 50 millimeters. So the volume of air that has moved into those maggots or into the tube, at least that we can confirm is 353.43 millimeters cubed. However, they want you to give this as a rate. So we need to divide by the time taken and also take into account the mass of maggots that we used. And they tell you at the top here that the time taken was five minutes. So we're dividing our answer by five and it was five grams. So divide by five again or five by five divide by 25. Either way, you'll get the same answer, which is 14.13 millimeters cubed per minute because we divided by the five minutes and per gram because we divided by the five grams. So that is um, our respirometers, one of the ways to measure the rate of respiration. So just some of the key points to remember, the respiring maggots, they are absorbing, they're taking in that oxygen for respiration. The carbon dioxide which is produced is equal to the volume of oxygen taken in, but it's absorbed by the soda line. That then causes a decrease in volume of the gases and therefore a decrease in pressure of the gases in the experimental tube. Um, because we have that lower pressure in the experimental tube compared to the control tube, that forces the coloured liquid to move towards the experimental tube. Last key point I put down was the units, because this is quite a common either two or three mark question to know the units for rate of respiration. So centimetre cubed, or whichever unit of volume. The idea is it has to be cubed per unit time, per unit mass. And that's it. One of the ways to measure the rate of respiration to um, go with topic five, energy transfers, A-level biology. So that's it for our lesson today. Be sure to subscribe just by clicking the link here to keep up with all of the other videos that will be coming up to help you with the A-level.